you for joining us this morning. Today we've got the family here at my place. We've got Mella and we've got Jarley. And Jarley has been putting some smoke in the entrances of the beehives just to calm them down a little bit. And then what we're going to do is show you how to put the super on. Hopefully one of these hives is ready to put the super on. The super is the top box, the honey harvesting box, which is has our invention in it. So to do that, we're going to have to pull the hive apart and have a look and see if one of these hives is ready for the super. Now, Jali, this one, was that the one you caught the swarm? Yeah. So Jali was catching a swarm on top of the car all by himself, shaking it in the box. It was pretty cool. And um, now the bees are built up almost ready to put the super on. That's it. You keep that puffing, Mella. That keeps the smoker nice and alight. So let's just take the roof off. Can you take that off just by lifting it up? And we'll just put that one aside. And what, what we're going to do is then get a hive tool. Here we go. Ah, you are. You're doing a great job, Mella, keeping that smoker alight. And if anyone's got questions along the way for any of us, including Jali, just uh, put them in the comments below and we'll answer them as we go. That's it. Keep going around. And the idea is we're levering off this inner cover here just by putting the tool in like this. But before I do that, you might have noticed I haven't put my bee veil on. So before you let the bees out of the box, make sure you protect yourself. If you're new to beekeeping, have your gloves ready as well. I'm just going to do up that zip all the way around. All the way around there. Make sure the top, the middle one's done up as well. Dad. Yes. I'm bored. Okay, well, let's open the beehive and see what's inside, eh? Who knows? There might even be a little bit of honey to lick in there. Yum. All right. Okay. So here we go. Charlie's doing a great job. You're levering up that side. So for those that are just tuning in, so we're going to super one of these hives today. We'll see if they're ready anyway. Okay. I'm going to pop this side. And... Honeycomb! Look at that. There is honeycomb. It looks pretty ready for a super. You know why? Because I'm seeing them starting to build honeycomb up on top and there's lots and lots of bees. And I can see that they've finished drawing all of these combs out. And I'm pretty sure they're ready for the super. Brood nest. The queen could be on here. So I'm just having a quick look in case we can spot the queen. Sometimes she's sitting right up here what does she look like under again? the lid. Well, she's just a bit longer than the other bees. So she's got a big, long abdomen, bigger legs. She kind of struts around instead of uh, the, the walk of the other bees, but not to be confused with these drones here. The Ooh. drones look like big sort of teddy bear shaped bees. Like one. So they're more fun to play with, depending on your levels of what you think fun is of course <laughs> and here's my sister Mira joining in she's going to grab a, go, a drone can I have a drone there we go I've got a drone yeah. beautiful but because, got another bee. because the queen could another be on there I'm going to put well, that right at the entrance okay we need a little bit of smoke in here Mel's going to grab the smoker and to, to pull, it, pull out one of these frames, we just need to clear the bees away. And the smoker does that really well. That's it. Pop it over here. You think we can get this frame out and have a look at it? See if it's ready. There we go. Good, good. So, I think I might grab this one right in the middle. And we'll just have a look at what's going on there. And if we smoke these bees away... 
we can actually get right in there without damaging the bees. Sometimes just a little bit of smoke and wait for a little bit and the bees will get out of the way. And that lets us cut this piece of comb, which will allow us to pull this frame out. So I'm trying to choose one. It's nice and easy to pull straight up. I'm just going to cut the comb away like that. Like that. Can I eat it? Well, you could, you could, but you're going to have to get it through your bee veil, so you might need to just put it aside away from oh, yes. True. bees. Next, we're going to go sideways a little bit just by wiggling down here. See that? And here. And we're just breaking the wax that's holding these end bars together. Now, the, the J hook, J for Jolly, hooks <laughs> under the end of here. Uh, this way, right? Okay. Oh. And now you can lever it and the frame should come upwards. Uh, instead the hive is coming sideways. Yeah. A little bit stuck together still. Just wait. You're doing a great job, but let's move across a little bit. We'll put this smoker down for the moment. Okay. That's it. Well done. So nice and slow and gentle because there's lots of bees down there. Might even add a bit more smoke to get more bees out of the way. If we put this down by the entrance. Oh, could you get the other end? I can do that for you. Okay, it's coming up now. So can you grab, you can put your tool down. That's it, in your pocket. And if you grab each end, just That's it. And slowly, Sometimes slowly come up. A very and show that to Ruby holding the camera. Ruby's never held this camera before, so well done, Ruby. Oh, wow. Amazing. So what we got here is all of the capped brood, it gets called. So the bees are going through their metamorphosis, changing from a grub into a bee. That's it. So if you watch carefully, you might even caterpillar emerging into a and butterfly. also, some bees like that one right there are feeding the baby grub bees. That's right. Well noticed. You got your eye in here. There and 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 there. Oh, that one's a cool one. Oh, is that a drone? No, that's not a drone. And there. And let's have a look on the other side. More cat brood. So every one of those cells, it's thousands. It's going to turn into a bee. That's right. So what we're going to see soon. A bee Oh, there's another bee -bee one. Is an explosion of bees in your hive. There'll be so many bees <laughs> that we need to put another box on. So this is perfect. What? Well, we need to put another box on to give them more room. Even though here we are in our autumn. So this time of year in places that get long cold winters aren't putting another box on but here we are with some good honey coming in the bees really building up and we get good flows in the winter time so we may as well put the super on and see how we go all right not quite yet and they come with the cat At this box here, Jali's just explaining all of the parts of the box. Through these little caps down here. You pull them out, which is very hard, you sometimes need to do it with. Okay, the hive tool caught the bee suit. Ruby's holding the camera. It's all going on. Lovely. So, and you can do it. So we're not quite ready to put the super on. You know why? Because we haven't reset the cells. And some of them might have moved in transport and be not in line. If you have a look down here, just come in a bit closer, you can see hexagon shapes. Now, it's a little bit tricky with the angles. But what you've got to do to make sure they're all forming a hexagon shape 
is put that in the top slot. See how there's two slots there? This is an important bit of preparation. Now you just turn that. That's it. Done. So that's all you need to do to push them all down into position. Now we can do that to the frames while they're sitting in the box. So Jolly, do you want to pull out all of these little caps? Yes, Dad. Can I pull out one? Yeah, you can pull one out it's if you hard. can. It's a bit hard with gloves, but you're using the end of the hive tool. Good. Dad. And we'll put them up here for the um, moment. You want to pull out that one? Good. and turn it. If you want to come around here you can see what's going on. That's it but we didn't go all the way to the back and that's another important thing to do. So you fill the knock at the back and then to the 90. That's it. Do you remember what 90 degrees means? That's it. Okay go again. Charlie how old are you? Seven. How old are you Mella? Four. Seven and four. Ooh, not that far. It's great fun age to be beekeeping. Here we go. Excellent. And you can do it. Beautiful. Okay. So. Important little thing to note, and that's we want a nice flat face here. And how you achieve that is by pushing all the frames to the front. The reason why you want that flat is you don't want any bees escaping between the frames. Okay, so have a look at the back here. If you come to the back around here, you can see there's a, there's a little adjustment screw. And I've adjusted all of these screws out, or Jali and I have, but have a look, we've forgotten one. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to adjust that to make sure the frames are pushed forward using this tool here. Okay, Mel is going to have a go at putting that uh, last cap in. So all we need to do is lift up this frame here and unwind this screw a little bit. Oh, that's the wrong bit I've got in there. Hang on. Somewhere in my pocket I've got the right bit. So you've got to swap this to the right screwdriver head for the screw. And then, I'm just going to wind it out a little bit like this. Just, you want to help? Okay. Beautiful. Okay, that. This big box goes on top, and this thing will help to get the queens not coming up because they fit through there. And the drones can't, and the queens can't. Well, we need to keep the that's, queens out of the top box so they don't lay eggs in our honey. That's it. Well done. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is get a bit of smoke. Mella, could you go behind Jolly there and just grab a smoker? There we go. And I want you to puff some smoke on top here just to clear the bees out of the way for when we put the excluder on, the queen excluder. So puff here. That's it. And see if you can blow it right down onto the bees. That's it. The reason why I want it there is I want to take off a little We're just going to get this out of the way. Notice how the bees change note, but soon they will calm. But the reason why we were doing that is to help them get out of the way. So now that excluder goes on. Make sure there's no bees in the air. That's right. So you can do that while you're putting it on just by nestling it down, just gently, gently whoop, <laughs> rubbing it a little bit around. So all the bees are out of the way. There's one step under this yellow bar. Okay. <laughs> the queen excluder's in place. And now queen on we can put the top box right on. What if there's a queen on the lid? Exactly, you're thinking. 
So what we need to do before we put the lid on is just to have a really good look for that or just shake all the bees off at, at the entrance. Um, but it's good to have a look because the queen sometimes can't find her way back in if you shake her off. So now we need to get the right way around. We want to do the harvesting at the back. And can you brush that little bee off the excluder edge? And this just goes on there. That's all you need to do. Uh oh. In the excluder. Uh oh, that happens sometimes. Okay. So there now we. We've got a high hive. We've got a high hive. And a low hive. So I'm looking at this. Most of the bees have walked back into the entrance. Ooh. But I will have a look just in case the queen might be there. I can't see any queen. So I'm pretty happy that she's in the bottom box. I can see a drone there. Oh, can I have it? Yeah, you can have the drone. Let's see if we can find another one. Okay, it's going to be hard with the gloves. They're good ones to play with without the gloves because they don't have the stinger. Now that's a drone. I can see it. It's right there. <laughs> okay, so what we can do oh, is, is, is shake the rest of the bees off. So to get bees off something, give it a, a quick shake like this. And you get a lot of the bees off. And that way it won't get squashed on the edge. And you can put that right on top like that. Yeah, but... And we've successfully put your super on. And what's going to happen is the... Oh, some bees are going in That's there. That's it. Push it down a little bit. Bees are in there. They're already exploring it, are they? Yeah. That's great. So if you've got questions, put it in the comments below. And it could be questions for Jali, Mella, or myself. But here we go. We'll put the super on. This is a, a split, this hive. Jali took a split first form, but we couldn't find one. So we took a split. And then we found a swarm. And so that's this one. So his little apiary is building up. So, Jali, why did you want to start keeping bees? Because it's fun. And also because I wanted a pet and I didn't have one. <laughs> and what are you going to do with the honey? Sell it at a roadside store. I'm halfway through building. Great. And also, I'll eat peppermint. Yay, peppermint for the bees, and sell half of it. Awesome. Um. bees coming in and out of the entrance for a sec. I've just got to go and get Trace dialed up. Okay. Mel is climbing up the mountain. Jolly's putting the roof on. We're, um, we're looking uh, and I'm just trying to get Trace dialed in. Um, Can you run downstairs and get Kylie yeah. and her phone? Yeah. Okay, if you've got questions, you can put them in below and we will um, dial in Trace to read those out. Beautiful. Excellent. So now you can open the side windows and just have a look at the bees exploring the... Uh, that's it. Oh, together yet. So it's still a bit wobbly jubbly, but as the bees. Oh, the bees just got killed in there. Really? Yes. Uh oh. What happened? That was that one that squashed before. Yes, and it had half the body still in there. Oh dear. Sometimes that happens. Well, we try and be so as careful as we can. Open this window. You see, I can't just yank it. You have to twist these. Handles here. Uh, just like that, then you can pull it off. Beautiful. And there is not many bees. Not yet. Not many bees. But soon there will be full of bees and some gathered corn. Nice. And we might do another one There's and you bee. might be able to see it with bees. There's a bee, darling. There's some in the back here, darling. Okay, can you see some in the back? Yeah. What, what we might do next is... There's one, there's one, there's 
and there's a mountain. 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 There's a mountain
that one was the swarm, this one was the split because we did rainbow roof one first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that honey drizzling there, Dad. We got it mixed up. That does look yummy, doesn't it? Mm. Do, you yeah. th do you think we should? Yeah. Do you think we should put some honey aside for you to eat after? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock yeah. this on the ground, which will knock all the bees off. Uh oh. And then I will um. Yeah. We can do that. Uh, a tray. Come here. Look at the. Try and see if we can get trays on board. Okay. Look at that beautiful bees. Do you want to explain that, that what's going on in the hive here and get your macro lens out? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. There are lots of bees over there. Yeah, there is. There's still it's over here, Mel. Let's have a look. They're slurping up all the honey. You can see their little combs. Can you see their little combs as they're slurping up the honey? Yeah. Look at that. They're licking up the honey. As yeah. Because we've broken the honey as we've opened the hive, they're there licking, licking it up. Okay. A uh, few little technical difficulties here, dialing in the the questions, but hopefully we'll get there. And I've got. A Mirrors, yeah. and take out this edge comb here, get the bees off it, and we can take uh, just a little bit out of the center, is, it, is a nice thing to do. Yeah, let's just take out one with some nice honeycomb and we'll cut a little bit out for the kids. Wow. Have your bees been busy or what? Look at that, Look at that. beautiful comb of honey. Look at that beautiful honey. Are we going to cut some out or are we going to leave it? We'll cut a little bit out and leave the rest for the bees, eh? Hey? Let me have a look at that next one. I think that next one's a little bit more capped than this one. This one's still got some room at the bottom. So I'm going to pop this one back in. And then grab that next one over. Where's that smoker? Let's use a little bit of smoke to get the bees away from the ends here. And again, we go sideways. I need to get this little one in here first. Honey. Yep, got this in. Now you can help me. Look at that, the honeycomb's oh, coming heavy. up. Oh, heavy. Hey Trace, thanks for joining oh, wow. us. You know what? This one has got Hello. Hey Trace, thanks for oh, joining okay. us. 
<laughs> We've got, uh, <laughs> is there any questions coming in? It's got a big ring of money, but Just they've already sec. started filling the brood in the centre here. Look at that brood all the way out towards the edge. That's a really good sign that we have a, uh, a nice virile hive producing oh. a lot of bees. It'll be ready for a super oh. now as well. Uh-oh, there's a hive beetle in there. There's two. There is a few small hive beetle at this time of year. Charlie first, spotted the hive beetle. I first thought it was a bee. Oh, All right. Okay, as we do this honeycomb thing, is there any questions, Trace? Yeah, hi, Cedar. Hopefully you can hear me loud and clear. Lots of people tuning in. Um, people loving also the different variety of bee suits with you and the kids as well, which is fantastic. Um, just wondering, Cedar, what type of bees that... Um, have dragged all around the world with them because they're such amazing pollinators and they've become um, a, a, not only a really important part of our, our food system but they also make honey which we all love as well so there's different breeds of them and this will be a mix because the queen typically mates with up to 30 or even breed called Italian but there's Caucasians and there's Carnolians and all sorts of breeds that beekeepers breed as well. Okay, we're going to have to shake some of the bees off. And um, we won't add too much smoke because we don't actually want to flavour the honey with smoke here. But what we can do is just get a little bit of foliage. This is, this is my favourite bee brush because it doesn't store pathogens. Um, there we go. Can I do it? Good. good, good. Yeah, you can do it too. You can grab a, and what we want to do is just sweep gently across the comb, brushing any bees off. Here we go. There we go. All those bees are getting off nicely. And uh, what we're going to do next Just naturally drawn this comb, we can just cut a bit out and put it straight back in. Alright. We've got so, most of the bees off. Most of the bees off. We'll just hold this right over here and we'll, we'll cut some comb out for you. Ready? Now it's a little bit delicate. It's a little bit delicate, but let's have a see how we go. Ready? Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, look at that. So that should fall, fall right out, shouldn't it? Maybe. There we go. <laughs> That's beautiful, isn't it? Now we can enjoy that piece of honeycomb. You know what? The bees will fill that in super quick. And what you'll get is a different type of honey in the comb here. And you'll end oh, up with... Over the tray. I think it's dripping a little bit. It is dripping. We might put that back in the hive for the bees to clean up. Do you want to hold that? Oh. We'll drop that right back in. So come over here and put that gently down into the hive again. So you want to hold the top bars, which are here and here. You want to come on this side, Charlie, because it's on this side. Yes. Beautiful. And gently putting that back in. And those busy bees get to work filling in just actually a lot of work actually chewing that comb away to make the right bee space so they can service the Around the other way, like this. Up we go. That's the love heart thing. 
Oh, it's all, they've already started getting in that tiny little bottom. They're starting to lick it up and they'll be repairing away. Look, this bee's got two pieces of capping there and it's dragging it along. And they just dropped. They dropped it. Okay, we've got a little bit of grass. Hey, I think I have a bee on my seat. <laughs> Apologies, we've been a bit busy this morning here with the family to answer many questions. But if you've got some questions, Chase, you can read another one out. Yes, I uh, Stephen, Stephen, who's calling in from Bolivia in the eastern Andes, is just saying, notice that you're putting a super on in late autumn, um, also understands that we're here in Byron Bay. Um, is, it, is that normal as the bees are starting to cool down for winter? I love. Now, uh, climate is not every place is the same. So here we are in a subtropical region where we actually get some decent honey flows over the winter. So we're putting it on knowing that it doesn't get that cold here, but it also doesn't get, um, uh, it doesn't get cold enough for the, these honey flows during the winter which means they uh, will might even actually fill up the frames over the winter time for us to keep up to survive winter it's what's coming up ahead in the bee season in some tropical places you get better honey in the winter than in the summer so ask local knowledge find out what's the appropriate time to put on a super in the northern hemisphere people will be get, installing their bees and getting ready uh, now to to in some places be putting their supers on so it's timely to do that to show you how to to prepare your super and put it on and um, thanks to Jali and Mella and their little beekeeping efforts here this morning. We've, um, we've managed, lost them to the honey. we've lost them, they've taken off after the honeycomb, which is fair enough, I would too. <laughs> and uh, they've managed to put this super on and hopefully we'll get a bit of activity over the winter time and we'll end up with uh, some honey stores. Any more questions, Trace? Yeah, fantastic, Cedar. Um, Josh is asking, are there any advantages of filling up two brew boxes before adding a soup? I wouldn't do that. The reason to just keep it in a smaller configuration. And if I do want to add another box, I'll do it after they've already started to use the flow hub. Otherwise you'll be waiting a long time and you might miss the season with the flow frames and not be able to extract in that beautiful, easy way. It does depend on the season and where you live as well. So, some, in some places, they like to keep a full box of honey for the winter. And uh, so, in, in some places they might put just a half a box extra on or another whole box. So ask your local beekeepers as well how much if, if there's how much honey they need for the winter and you may need to feed them in a, and that'll probably be best done in a conventional box or a, a, a or anything just to build up some stores for lasting a, a, a long cold winter here in the southern hemisphere coming up in the, the southern parts of Australia and New Zealand. So it um, really, like anything in beekeeping, the answer depends on there's so many Keep the questions coming. Fantastic. Kim's asking, uh, calling in from Tasmania, just wondering do we ever have wasp problems? Um, she's saying the wasps have been fighting and killing their guard bees. 
wasps have been fighting killing guard bees in Tasmania. Now we yeah. we um They they are there. To bees, so it'll get in there and eat a lot of your bees. So, uh, if you might like to reduce the entrance down so your bees can defend themselves more easy. And we've got entrance reducers we sell, or we can make your own just by putting some sticks of wood in the entrance to, or if you're in a hurry, just even some straw or grass in the entrance to narrow it down so the bees but uh, for that's good this is a question Cedar actually think it's uh, we get called in about quite a lot is Tammy's asking do you leave the flow hive at the three degree angle all the time or just when you're harvesting the honey just leave it at three degrees all the time. That makes it nice and easy. You don't have to pick up the hive and adjust it and all of that when you're trying to harvest. And it also means the leak back point, which is at the back here, can let honey drain back into the hive. So there's a special point here we call the leak back point. So sometimes, depending on how your bees are, are sealing all of the, the flow frame parts, you can get a bit of honey dripping into this trough area. Ideally, you want it to go straight back for the bees and not to hang around to go fermented or candied, depending on the climate in this area here so that works quite well until bees will be bees and block it up so from time to time you notice some honey building up in some of your frames they're close when you in your jar. So of water issues getting in the entrance and uh, what we've done to, to make sure the hive can't flood with water is we've put a screen bottom board so any water will go through into the tray. And we'll also slope the entrance down a bit to minimise that. And it really depends. I've got a hive on the other side of the house here where we've been through a couple of floods now and no water got into the tray. But the hive's up on the hill at our office with the rain getting blown in by the wind uh, fills up the trays all the time. So after a round. And Clover say hi to you all. it's built for durability on the top and that creates a better weather seal this is the area that really cops it now on the side of the hive here this is actually a decking coat so it's actually not my favorite because it's stained the wood so you can get deck coats that are ones that stain the wood and you can get ones that also um I prefer the ones that have the clear because you can see the beautiful wood grain a bit more easily. But either one is a good choice, and this is a water based deck coat. So. Right. 
that are ready to rock and roll. So the best way to get healthy bees is to get them off a bee breeder. They breed for hygienic traits. They breed for uh, nice and gentle traits. And those two things mean they will be a pleasure to work with. And uh, so that's the best way. Um, sometimes you catch a swarm and you don't know what's go- whether it's going to be grumpy or not. And later you can um, requeen that if necessary with a with a queen from a bee breeder. But um, either way, getting started is the main thing with whatever way you can, you can get started. But if you have bees available, a nucleus is the easiest way. You can buy them. Pollen. It's got a hives happy and And, and two weeks later, they've drawn out all the and and they're busy with bees like this. That's the time to add the super, and ideally when there's a honey flow coming ahead as well. So that could happen in as little as two weeks or not happen at all during the whole season or the whole year. Now, we had a poor spring here. The ironbarks, which are the predominant species you're looking at behind here, didn't flower very often. exercise a lot of patience sometimes. The flowers, the trees, the birds and the bees to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to actually get your honey harvest. Oh, I think we're having a little bit of a glitchy going on there, Steve. Okay, so we're... Um, we, we might be time to okay. Close to each other, or is it the way people are just like like normally our hives at the apiary are further apart? Have a look here. Once we but it's more about accessibility to the to the window. And, you know, when you're standing in here doing this brood inspection, you don't want to be sitting on the other hive and so on. So um, it's important only for that reason. So a little more space would be great here. We've just got a few plants and things in a way we'll need to trim to to move the hive sideways. And you can move the hive a, a metre or, or, or two even. If they were really close together like this, I'd just do half a metre at a time so the bees don't get confused and go to the other hive. 
and you can do do that each day if you want to spread them out a bit further or creep them across the yard to the other side so that's a nice way to move in a short distance so you just get the help from a friend you pick it up and you move it a little bit next day come You can. So, Tracy, you've got the answer to that question. We do. We do get those uh, those requests. So we have made a kit now. You can get this stand with the with the pest management tray in it and the screen bottom board, and you can put it under our classic or our hybrid. Hey, so just on that question before, I think it cut out. It was that question on um, when when was the good time to add the super when you got that package of bees, bees that you have again. It just cut out, and so Gary's just tuning in again to see if you could just repeat that. Okay, the time to add the super is when the bees are uh, ready and you've got a honey flow ahead. So here you've got... So then, my climate, or it's a warm time of year, but it just means you'll be waiting longer for the bees to start working the flow frames. However, if it's a colder time, and you know there's not much honey coming up ahead, then don't put the super on because that'll just make things a bit harder for them to keep their brood nest warm with a big empty box above and not enough bees to fill that box. Here nice. we go. Nice one, Cedar. And the other question came in on that, and we've had a few um, local Australians calling as If your super has still got quite a bit of honey in it, people are queen excluder the reason being is the the bees will group together to keep themselves warm as a ball they'll actually stop laying eggs in a really cold time and uh, the the bee ball will follow the honey around the hive now if they've gone up top to eat the honey and you've got an excluder in place then your queen will be left behind and she might perish and you might end up starting the season without a queen. So um, re remove the excluder if you do want to leave the flow super on over the winter time. There's not any issues with cold and the flow frames, so don't worry about that. It's more about uh, right sizing your hive for the winter. One more complication is in springtime, you want to put the excluder back in. So to make sure the queen's down the bottom when you do that, You'll be shaking the bees off all of your flow frames, putting the excluder back in place and putting the top box back on. And that way, you know, all of the bees are downstairs and up and work those flow frames, leaving the queen where she needs to be in the brood box below. Nice. So do the drones fit through the queen excluder? They don't. So what you'll see when you open the windows of most flow hives that have the excluder in place Fifty on whether the queen will actually lay in flow frames or not. That's my experience. So if you've got a queen that doesn't, then you can roll forward without a queen excluder. If you, But you need to get in there and have a look at your flow frames and make sure the queen actually isn't laying in them and make sure she's not a flow frame egg layer. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've had hives going for years and years and haven't needed the excluder, but equally I've tested it out on other hives and she's gone straight up there and laid in the in the flow frames. So it's a bit of experimental work there. We better start putting the hive back together. So, They're telling us thanks, so had enough. Mira, the, the tone of the bees, if I get right down here, <laughs> you can hear that they're just getting a little bit annoyed with being open so long. So I'm putting my head down here so you can hear it. Give us a thumbs up if you can hear the bees. 
<laughs> yeah. Don't do what I do. Oh, the bees are getting a bit annoyed. Stick your head in the hive. <laughs> to put the lid back on without squashing in the bees. Okay, so this one's just gonna go straight on there with this hold in the cover. And then the roof can go on and we can say thank you bees for your show and tell and your amazing effort making that comb that the kids are now enjoying inside. Yes, this beautiful hand painted roof. Yes, and the effort he put into taking a split. So, time for one more question. Oh, great. Just, a, a, just wanting to just frame hives and how many brood frames are in that box. Okay, great. So if you counted the frames when we had it open, there was actually eight brood frames in the bottom. So that matches with eight frame Langstroth sizing. Now, wider comb, they'll build wider comb. And you can see here we've We also have a Flow Hive 7, which matches with the 10 frame Langstroth size. These are both Flow 6s. Thank you very much for tuning in and uh, being patient with us, getting onto the uh, questions. and. explain how the flow hub works. It's certainly enjoyable for me to do this with my children and to do something that's, you know, out of the out of the house and out in nature, learning about things and getting the